Dr. Shola Fola Alade originally trained as a medical doctor. Dr. Fola Alade is respected internationally as a pastor, author, publisher, conference speaker, coach, and mentor to various businesses. Served faithfully for 23 years as a pastor in London in one of the fastest growing denominations in the world. Pastor Fola Alade, together with his wife, Pastor Abimbola, are now the lead pastor at Liberty Church UK, where they equipped believers to live in a spirit-empowered life. Dr. Shola Fola Alade has touched the lives of thousands around the world with the simple but powerful message that inspires, challenges, and empowers individuals to live beyond their limitations, discover their destiny, and live by divine design. He equips people to make an impact in their generation and exercise their leadership influence in society. For close to two decades, Pastor Shola Fala Alade has trained and influenced thousands of people through his seminars, TV broadcasts, and the publishing of the internationally acclaimed Quarterly Leadership and Lifestyle magazine. He has written 13 widely acclaimed books, including The Little Things That Could Make a Big Difference in Your Marriage, The 12 Things You Do Not Know That Could Be Destroying You, The Secret to Winning Your Invisible Battles, and the most recent offering, The Four Pillars of Great Relationships. Dr. Fola Alade resides in London with his wife, Abimbola, and their two sons. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome Pastor Shola Fola Alade. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to this phenomenal and significant conference, this great leadership conference. And I want to salute my big brother, uh, Pastor Tola, who, like he says, I've known for many years. And actually, I've, 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 I've known his family for many years. Um, you know, his wife and myself, you know, um, you know have uh, history family-wise. Um, and, you know, it's always so refreshing to see what God is doing with uh, Pastor Tola, Jesus House Baltimore and the various initiatives he has. Pastor Tola is one of the most astute leaders I know, uh, or uh, let's put it this way, from out of um, the denomination from which we came uh, from. He's somebody that has always challenged me. I, you know, uh, I, 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 well, let's simply put it this way. When I grow up, I'd like to be like him. There are many things he does that I'd love to emulate and you know, it's it's so such a breath of fresh air to see this conference and what has been done over the years, you know, um, and you know the the caliber of of speakers that have been brought in, the even this particular conference, you know, to pull this <laughs> uh, uh, retinue of speakers together, you have to be somebody who is credible, and so thank you for the privilege, and so I want I want to go straight into them. I also. You know, want to give kudos and salute uh, uh, Pastor Bolaji. Great, I caught the end part of the message. Um, I was at another conference, um, but thank God I'm here and uh, ready to go. So basically, I'm going to be speaking about overcoming the burden of leadership. And to do that, I'm going to read scripture verse. I'm a pastor. Uh, just in case you don't know that, I've also run businesses. I still run uh, a couple. So, but I'm going to be speaking primarily from my experience as a pastor, but also a little from the business world. Uh, but and regardless of what kind of leader you are, by God's grace, it should transcend. So we're going to read one scripture verse primarily, Exodus chapter 18, verse 18 to 22, which just says, so that we put, we give context. So Moses' father-in-law said to him, the thing that you do is not good. Both you and these people who are with you will surely wear yourselves out. For this thing is too much for you. Very significant words there. Wear yourselves out. This thing is too much for you. You are not able to perform it by yourself. If you have um, a, a pen or a highlighter, it's, I think it's good to highlight those things in your Bible. Listen now to my voice and I will give you counsel and God will be with you. 
stand before God for the people so that you may bring the difficulties to God and you shall teach them the statutes and the laws and show them the way in which they must walk and the work they must do. Uh, moreover, you shall select from all the people able men such as fair God men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over uh, them to be uh, rulers of thousands, hundreds, rulers of fifties, rulers of tens, and then let them judge the people at all times. Then it will be that every great matter that shall uh, they shall bring to you, but every small matter they themselves shall judge. So it will be easier for you for they will bear the burden with you. Father, Lord, we pray by your spirit that you would open up our hearts and destinies. And as uh, we, we uh, partake of this conference, we ask that uh, you will move each and every one of us into that place uh, of uh, leadership and that, that, that place of responsibility where we're able to carry more and, and, and uh, bring our organizations and our institutions into the place where you want them to be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Okay, so well, the burden of leadership. Uh, today I'm gonna to basically, first of all, give you very quickly the outline, what I'm gonna be talking about. I, I we'll be talking about the objective, the objective, hallelujah, of, uh, 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 of what it is we're talking about today. And then we would also be talking about what is a burden, what is a burden. Um, and then we'll give, I'll give you examples in scripture of burdens. Um, and then I will talk to you about different types of burdens that there are. And then we will then now delve into the ways to overcome the burden, the ways to overcome the burden of leadership. So essentially, um, what, is, what, what is our aim today? My remit is how can you transform the burden of leadership into a source of empowerment and growth? So essentially, how can you channel what seems to be like uh, you know, uh, something that can be a weight and then push it and use it for empowerment and also growth, you know, within ourselves and also growth within the organization. And so essentially, in terms of definition, what is a burden? What is a burden? Well, um, they are, they, a, a burden in the, in, the, in the very real practical sense is actually, first of all, you know, physical. And it's, it's represented by a load. You know, um, if one good example is if you see a donkey, you know, a, a donkey is a beast of burden. And um, also you have oxen in those days or even a horse, you know, the, uh, to carry the rider and all of that and for work. So a burden essentially, you know, in the old days and in terms of how it, it, in, the, in the biblical parlance was a physical weight, generally speaking. But then you also have, you know, as more so today when we speak concerning leadership, we don't carry physical burdens, but we carry a lot of psychological, emotional, and spiritual and mental burdens. And I can tell you, those burdens are, are literally bigger and almost more lethal than physical burdens, okay? At best, if you carry a physical burden, your back may break, as it were, or you may have a fracture of something or the other. But an emotional uh, uh, um, fracture is something totally different. Now. It's a load of any kind or a severe task, okay? It's a difficult duty requiring effort uh, or a prophecy in, used in spiritual terms, scripturally, uh, or of, a, of a calamitous or a disastrous nature. Not necessarily so. A, a, a spiritual burden is, you know, an assignment that God gives to a person. So let me give an example. God gave, um, um, Nehemiah had a burden to build the wall of, of, of uh, Jerusalem, okay? And then also we see that uh, um, um, Noah was given a burden to build an ark. And so when we speak concerning burdens, I'll show you in a short while that burdens can be bad or they can be good, okay? And so when we speak concerning uh, 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 burdens, burdens eventually become vision, okay? At least the kind of one that God gives. A burden will eventually become a, a vision, you know, to be pursued. Like we, like I, I mentioned earlier, um, and when you see the book of Habakkuk ch chapter two, it starts with the with the burden that Habakkuk had, and and then when he went and prayed, it turned into a vision, which was in Habakkuk two two. You know, God's response was write the vision and then make it plain, so that he who sees it will run with it. I will explain this a bit later on. Later on, a burden is also a responsibility, uh, that which is born with difficulty and with obligation. So somebody can be saddled with the burden. You know, of of you know, pastor could just give 
and tell somebody, look, I, I give you the burden of, of uh, you know, to, of keeping this place secure, it's the security and all of that. And you will find that the moment that person is giving, the, how you know somebody has taken on a burden is that they begin to have sleepless nights concerning that thing. How do you know a, a burden has been transferred? The person who gave the burden stops feeling the burden. The person who received it starts, as it were, feeling or carrying the burden, you know, psychologically, emotionally, and otherwise. Burdens could also have to do with the meeting of demands, like the paying of bills, meeting expectations, financial overheads, and I will talk about that in a short while. But very quickly, I think it's important to note and mention that there are what you call legitimate and illegitimate burdens. And this is the, this is the, the significant thing here. So when we speak concerning the burden of leadership, you know, they're, they're, which essentially means that there are burdens that we are called to carry and they are the ones that we should not carry, you know. Um, and so uh, the, the legitimate burdens, yeah, uh, bring ease or we do them with ease, but the ones that are Ill illegitimate usually lead to disease, okay. And so this is when a, the burden, the load is too heavy. And so it becomes oppressive. You know, you, I'm sure you've heard of when people say this person was a burden to me. <laughs> when somebody keeps, so for example, you know, say for example, uh, uh, you know, uh, a person can have the responsibility of looking after his own family. Okay. Um, that is the, your, the responsibility, say a father or a single mother. Uh, you are the leader of your family. But then, you know, then when other extended relatives begin to come, which is fair enough, you, I mean, it may be a burden that you or responsibility that you accept. But then, when other extraneous people, so many other people start, and then they keep coming again, I, then you know they, it, it can become oppressive, you know. And I I use that example, you know, to, to show you something later on. I'll connect it later on. Uh, what did Jesus say about burdens? What was it that Jesus said about burdens? You know, he said in Mark, Matthew chapter eleven verse thirty, "My yoke is easy." And my is light. Now, what I have said so far is very important foundation to have because then it will give you, um, if, if you're able to understand this foundation, yeah, it would help you understand how to navigate different kinds of burdens and how to discern which burden is legitimate and which one is illegitimate. Because Jesus made it very clear. Okay, he says, My yoke is what? easy and my burden is light essentially what jesus is saying is this now the words yoke and burden are, are, are very you know a yoke is a harness that is tied to an animal like i said a donkey a horse or whatever and it's that yoke is what is used to pull or carry a burden and what jesus christ is saying is that whatever responsibility he puts on the leader okay it's not supposed to be it's not meant to be oppressive to him and it's not meant say it's easy it's not meant to to cause disease and it is not meant to be uh, so heavy that it is destructive or oppressive. All right. And so what we don't want, <laughs> yeah, and what we're trying to do is to overcome, you know, illegitimate burdens. Yeah, you know, because uh, uh, my, my remit or assignment for today is how to overcome the burden of leadership. Okay. And so we are trying to say, essentially, how do we, avoid the disease move from the state of disease in our leadership responsibility to a place of ease all right and so uh when you look at the scriptures it says in the book of isaiah chapter 20 10 verse 27 it shall come to pass in that day his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his will be destroyed by because of the anointing oil. now let's leave the supernatural dimension for now although it's very important, but let's even just basically speak. Here yeah, he's talking about, look, some people are in the wrong job. In fact, a lot of people are in the wrong job. So they have a certain, and when you're in the wrong job, you are, you are, maybe you're working for Deutsche Bank or you're working for uh, um, um, uh, Citibank or, or whatever, you know, or Barclays or Microsoft, but you know that you are called to do something else. You know, regardless of how well you are paid, listen to this. There's, a, there's an illegitimate burden on your shoulder and a yoke. So you may be paid, you may be paid very high, but you have a burden of, of, of leadership here that is not yours to carry. And guess what? You know what? It will eventually lead to disease. I won't mention the name of the bank, 
but there's an investment bank that they walk the people crazy. I'm talking of crazy hours. I had to tell one or two of my daughters who were, I said, look, this, this, this bank is not a blessing to you. It has become a burden. Why? Because it's affecting your health, it's affecting your family, it's affecting various things. And, you know, it's important for us to have an understanding of this because, you know, we feel it's easy to think that, oh, well, anything that we're giving, you know, anything that uh, looks like work, then, you know, it's a burden of leadership that we should carry. No. Remember what I said, Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my what? Burden is light. Now, when he says the yoke is easy, it's still a yoke, <laughs> which means you still have something to pull and carry. But he says it will not, it will not be, uh, it will not be uh, uh, overwhelming for you. That's what that's that's what what he was trying to say. Um, and, and let's 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 now talk about the different kinds of burdens. And the question I ask, I want to ask here, yeah, if you want the best way to understand what a burden is as a leader is. To ask this simple question, what things keep you up late at night? What are the things that wake you up? What are the things that when you wake up, you are thinking about? Yeah, that is the burden of your leadership. <laughs> okay, very quickly, I'm going to run through four or five things which are, bur- some of them are legitimate, others are illegitimate. The first is performance pressure. Any competent leader yeah, will carry the burden of performance pressure, which is, you know, the, the pressures to make the numbers and hit targets, which is results. Every effective leader, you, you know, if, if, you are, if, if you are not pressured or burdened by that, then you are not fit to be a leader, which is, look, hey, if you are, say, for example, you're a football manager, how, how can we score the goals? If you're a pastor of a church, how can we grow the church? How can we, you know, how can we uh, ensure that you know the church is reaching souls blah 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 if you uh, head an, a, a corporation how can you sure ensure that we are we are making profit you know we are, we are we are hitting our turnover and making profit and all of that stuff so there are targets there are metrics so these are the things that keep you know leaders up at night then there's the second burden is punctual payments you know I, I i i tend to think in what you call acronyms or mnemonics easy way to remember things okay punctual payments this is about running and operating cost or overhead you know <laughs> the burden anybody who's a leader uh, will it's also has to be an effective manager so this is another thing that keep, keeps leaders up at night you know pain of the pain of bills you know uh, and uh, ensuring that bills are paid on time you know and you know, and when we talk about bills, we're talking about rent, you building this and that. You know, the Bible says in in the uh, New Living Translation, Second Corinthians eleven twenty eight to twenty nine. This is what Paul says. He says, "Then besides all this, I have the daily burden, daily burden of my concern for all the churches." Now, when you say the churches, yes, there's a dimension, and I will show you in a short while of oh, are these people doing well? And, but listen to this: in the twenty first century, you are thinking of hey. Um, uh, we we run four locations on Sunday, uh, apart from online. Last week we also had run Lagos, four, so five, sometimes six when we're in Houston. But listen to this, you know, in terms of the 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 responsibility, I, I we're not just thinking is the sound good, is the message out. We, we have to make sure the cinemas are paid, the musicians are paid. That's a burden by itself, and. You know, it says, and concerns for all the churches. Then there's the burden of people's problems. <laughs> you know, every any good leader, well, but be it a pastor or the, the, the CEO of an organization or a, a, the head of a family, will be concerned about the people within the organization. If all you're concerned about is turnover and profit, then you're not a great leader. You are con- you'll be concerned about your staff, their marriage, their marriages, their children's, you know, school fees, all of this hangs on you, you know, and their health. And this is why many leaders, you know, I will show you in a short while, they get burnt out and they wear out because the burdens are real. Yeah, they may not be carrying, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, two, a 200 uh, uh, kilogram weight, you know, or, or, or you know, uh, pulling a, a truck. But listen to this, there's a, there's a weight that they carry. Uh, and this is how, um, uh, Moses put it, he says in Deuteronomy 1, 9, 10 to 12, he says, and I spoke to you at that time saying, I alone am not able to bear 
you. <laughs> Says the Lord, your the Lord your God has multiplied you. Says there was a time you was I, I could carry you guys, but God has multiplied you, and here you are today as the stars of the heaven in, in multitude. How can I alone bear your problems and your burdens and your complaints? Oh, wow. He says, look, this yoke is too much for me. You know, Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden is like, he said, this one is not easy. This burden is like, there's another burden. And that is the burden of people's persecution. They are the people's persecution. And we see it written there in verse 12 here, in Deuteronomy 1. He says, you know, not only their, their, their problems and their burdens, but also their complaints. You see, every leader, if you are an effective leader, you, <laughs> you, will, you, will, you will be persecuted. You know, lies will be told on you, will be accused, you know, character assassination, different people with different agendas. You have to deal with various, you know, and these things will keep, you know, a leader up at night, you know. And then also peer pressure. Peer pressure, this is so very important. And I will talk about it, you know, in a bit more in a, li a little while. And, and the propensity to want to, you know, to, to be moved by what other people are doing, especially in these days of social media, Instagram, oh, this person has this now, that person has, look, even that will keep many leaders up late at night. And when we speak about the burden, yeah, we are talking about weight. We're talking about the physical weight, financial weight, whether psychological, emotional, or spiritual. And when you are thinking about weight, you know, if you think about Atlas, so just think about you sitting down and you are carrying a car <laughs> while sitting down, but the car is invisible. And you find that that person will be sweating. That person will, and you keep, and, and, and you, you are there and you're having to juggle various things and then they keep adding more and more things to you. So what, what, what does this mean? Leadership can be exhausting, stressful, and stress leads to disease. You, you know, our body, I'm going, the, the direction I'm going to take, I'm going to take it in a, in, 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 in a more, uh, in a certain direction, you know, so that you can, uh, I, I will leave room for other people to focus on certain other areas. But I believe this is a particular area that is so important that if we don't deal with, with it, we will have less leaders in the next few, in the next decade or so. Why? Because they will become burnt out. They'll become, um, they'll begin to have diseases, you, you know, and all of that stuff. And many will die out. Listen to this. Sometimes when we see leaders die, I'm not saying all the times, it wasn't God that took them out per se. It was an, an issue of that they did not manage burdens well. And so what people, many times is that happens is that, you know, um, people's health suffer, their marriages suffer, their children suffer. And people, you know, when, when, when stress, you know, uh, um, the weight, emotional weight and psychological weight usually, you know, results in stress, yeah, which could lead to high blood pressure, you know, uh, stroke, if not managed, heart attacks and cancer. A lot of the cancer that we see today is that as a result of stress. The body's immune system, immune system you know, uh, uh, is compromised. And, and diminished. And listen to this. I don't know if you've ever noticed this. When somebody, I'll give a case in point, President Obama, President Clinton, when they first got into office, noticed their hair is black. It was black, you know, primarily mostly. When just two, three years into office, you see their white hair begins to become cl close to white. This is the burden of carrying the, a nation, you know, on your shoulders. You know, but listen to this. You know, uh, 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 the Bible also shows us that there is a certain grace that is given to God-given leaders. That when you are when you carry the burden within your own sphere and field, field you will be able to say, in, in spite of the various pressures, like it says in Second Corinthians four eight, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. You know what he's saying essentially is that these things will come. But listen to this, hey. There's no killing this beetle. You know, um, I remain strong. I, become, I remain resilient. I'm indomitable, indestructible. Very quickly, how do we, how do we um, overcome the burdens of leadership? How do we overcome the burden of leadership? Or let's put it this way. How do we overcome, you know, uh, um, the, 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 the illegitimate burdens of leadership? or navigate or manage the burdens of leadership. The very first thing I will say, I'll run through this very quickly, is that you need to count the cost. 
um, if you're going to be a leader, yeah, or take her on any position, any responsibility, um, or take on any mandate or project, count the cost. L uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 28 verse, uh, to 30 says, For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, <laughs> whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is, is not able to, uh, uh, to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish it. You know, I mean, this, this is a building example. One of the things I like about Pastor Tola, I've watched him over the years. He's also a builder. You know, he's a very prudent person. You know, he, he's, I've, I've seen him build, you know, flats, houses, sell, blah, blah, blah. There's something about, there, there's a lot to learn from building and leadership, yeah? You don't just say, oh, I want to build a, a, a skyscraper. I want to build so, so, and so. There's, there, there's a lot of thought in it. The issue is, like the scripture says, you want to build something. It says, before you, you know, pick up one, one brick to put down, it says, sit down first and think it through. Have a budget, have a plan. You see, and, and begin to say, well, do I have enough? Do I have the finances? Or will I, you know, build halfway and then I won't be able to do it now? This is true of buildings, but it's also true of, of visions, yeah? Whether it's a church, many people just start this, they, they just, oh, this is the rainy tea, okay, let's go into it. This is so-so and so, let's go into it, <laughs> you know? I mean, I thank God for my various brothers and co who do various things, you know, crusades, morning prayers, this and that, you know? There is, you know, so I said, Pastor, you think, and I said, no, 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 I've counted the cost. That is not for me. You know, I've, I've counted the cost on this one. No, that one is not for me. Why? Because it's not just a, a cost in terms of finances. There's time and the cost to my family, the cost to my health, the cost, you know, and there are a number of things like that. So that's one of the first things, you know, the, the issue is ass assessing, assessing things. Then the second thing is capacity, understanding, you know, and pro having a proper estimation of your capacity. Okay. Uh, the, uh, uh, one one gentleman called Del, Del Bronner, he, he said he said this. He says, either you increase your tolerance of pain or reduce your vision to the level of pain you can tolerate. Now, you know, people tend to see other people doing great things. I say, ah, if uh, we went to this same school, we did this. If he, I, I, I trained as an accountant, I trained as a, uh, 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 he trained as an accountant, I trained as an architect, he trained as an architect. So uh, what we can do it? No, people are built differently, you know. And so, in terms of capacity, do you have the capacity? And when when we speak concerning capacity, capacity essentially means, do, you know, do you have the tolerance for pain? Do you have to, the tolerance for pain? I like the example. Uh, Pastor Bolaji used the example. I, I I managed to catch that, you know. Where, where we are begging, asking God for for more, for more. But God is saying, if if I gave you what you what you're asking for, this thing will kill you. So I have to prepare you. And so that was why God passed Joseph through what he went through. Listen to this. Look, um, there's a reason why Moses talked about you make them leaders of thousands, leaders of five hundred, leaders of hundreds, leaders of tens. Why? Because he knows that if you give the person who has a leader uh, leadership capacity of ten, one thousand, it will kill him. You know, and how do you know your, what your capacity is? Listen to this. Pain, pain. I said in the promo for this, uh, for this conference that, look, most people want to drive a Rolls Royce. The only problem is that they don't want to pay the price for it. <laughs> you know, everybody, I, I would like to drive a, a nice car. So we want to pay a, 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 a bicycle's price for, or a Volkswagen price for a Rolls Royce. The same way ministry-wise, most of us desire big ministry or big organizations you see you know the likes of uh pastor Ebukua, Awushika and and uh you know um and mrs audrey Osigbo, you know they 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 are they are, they are they are pushing the barriers and they're leading great organizations but if you 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 need to ask them about their tolerance for pain you know because there's a price they pay and this is what this gentleman says he said look if you cannot tolerate the pain then reduce the size of your vision all right and you can't achieve beyond the degree of your development. You cannot achieve, be, be, you know, you cannot achieve uh, beyond the degree of your development. You don't achieve goals, you grow into them. So 
like it's 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 shown here with the man carrying the weight well if you want to carry a bigger vision then you have to begin to train you know we don't have the time but there's something about under having a proper estimation of your capacity different people different capacity J jesus gave one one talent the other uh two and another five don't go beyond your capacity okay don't go beyond your capacity grow grow into it number three uh, um, 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 principle for overcoming the burden of leadership is clarity of vision you know and what, what do i mean by vision listen to this <laughs> if you're going to be an effective leader who um carries more burden such that the burden will not overwhelm you yeah you have to have very clear vision and you have to be not just a, a, a visioner but you have to have to have to be a great communicator of vision the bible puts it this way it says and then uh the lord answered me and said write the vision and one translation says make it plain on tablets that so that the one who reads it will run you know one day uh, i was meditating and god spoke to me and said look you said do you know why you're always tired you know uh, this was some time back and says because you are you are the you are the only one doing the running you are the only one doing the running so it's almost like as though you know um every people now just watching you just doing the running you are the one excited about what you're doing you are the one burdened by what you are doing and so i said ah so what what do i need to do he said look you need to share and make it very plain so that he who reads it begins to run which means share the vision in such a way that is so comp compelling that that thing that keeps you awake at night yeah begins to keep other people awake at night so that they come to you and they will say to you that pastor you know that thing that you said about so 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 and so uh, i would i would take responsibility for it one of the problems a lot of pastors are burning out a lot and a lot of leaders are burning out is because our vision is not clear enough okay my vision can certainly be, be clearer you know uh but the, the the point is there's something about you know when we communicate our vision then you have more people say aha now i see now i see what the ceo is saying and more people begin to you know buy in and they begin to become stakeholders in the vision number four uh, uh way to overcome the burden of leadership is effective delegation Sh share, sharing the load effective delegation and you know what what, what is that about uh to share the load the bible says in numbers eleven seventeen. this is the way uh it puts it, it says and i will come down and talk with you there this is god telling moses to gather you know 70 elders and he says look this thing is too it's too much for you <laughs> you know he says you will wear yourself out you cannot carry this thing alone can you can imagine from the old testament god was already concerned about us being overburdened and he says then i will come down and talk with you i will take up the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with you that you may not bear it yourself alone which means Look, if Moses had continued the way he was going, he would have killed him. You know, um, I like the way, <laughs> you know, uh, one wise man uh, said it this way. He says, you know, uh, because, <laughs> because you are called four man doesn't mean you should do the work of four men. Yeah? Because your designation or role is four man does not mean you should do the work of four, four men. Um, the, 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 the truth of the matter is that, hey, you know, it is easier you know to to get 10 people to do your work than to do the, to do the work of 10 you know so there's something about delegation about understanding how to you know break down your your your, your tasks your present tasks and begin to hive them off as it were and so that you can you can move on grow and move on to higher responsibilities and again what 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 will happen is that it empowers other people other people begin to fill in positions and they also begin to grow and they begin to get a handle and a grasp of leadership. Now, this is so very critical because it also has to do with the sustainability and the, and the longevity of the organization and also we ourselves as the leader. Uh, the ultimate test of leadership is what happens after you have gone. What happens after you have gone? You know, if your organized and when i say after you're gone if this is even not even just even talking about mor morbidity this is not talking about death what happens after you have gone in the sense that you know i remember a particular uh, a, a few months ago i wanted to go away somewhere on the but you know i was telling this person i was actually 
um, being engaged some, by somebody outside the organization. And the person was saying, look, can you commit to this? And I said to them, I said, ah, oh, that's a so, 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 and so, so, oh, I have to be there, this and that, 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 that. And then, you know what, the guy just put his notepad down and just he said, look, he's, he's a Caucasian gentleman, he said, Shola, he said, <laughs> what, what will happen if you are not, he says, if you are incapacitated, say you broke your leg or you are ill or you're hospitalized, are you saying the, the, your, the church cannot run without you? It made me pause and think. <laughs> and essentially what he was saying, it was like, look, hey, then if you cannot, if you cannot think through that, then you know what? <laughs> There's no point. What he was saying is essentially is that your organization has not matured to the point, you know, uh, that it should be. And then so point number five is focus. And when I say focus, you know, almost I will also use the word limitation. Let me tell you, leaders that last and leaders are effective are actually limited. They they put they they have limitations. They don't they, they can't do any everything. They don't do everything and they won't do everything. And by the grace of God, this is this is my principle. I I will not do anything and everything, no matter how how juicy it looks, no matter how good anybody else is doing it. You know, I I refuse to be why because I've learned over the years. You know, I've learned from 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 uh, past past uh, antecedents. And it, this is how Paul puts it. He says in Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse twelve to fifteen: For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with ourselves, who come who with those who commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves comparing themselves amongst themselves are not wise. And why Paul is saying it is that they are not wise is that, look, you, you, they, you will kill yourself. When you see Pastor Tola doing this or see Pastor Bolaji doing this or see Pastor Paul you doing this or see so, 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 I say, oh, I too, I'm going to do this, blah, blah, listen to this. Or this person has, has done this, I'll go out and do twice as much. And this one, hey, let me tell you this, by the grace of God, eh? By the grace of God, I, I I think in my heart, God has helped me to just, you know, put a, a premium on my health, my family over externals. Yeah. It says in verse 13, we, however, will not boast beyond a measure, but within the limits of the sphere, which means everybody has a sphere that God has given to them. And we are, we are limited by that sphere. You cannot go, you should not go beyond it. If you go beyond that sphere, you know, like how, how uh, uh, the, 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 the traffic uh, signs have what you call, I mean, 60, not, not more than, you know, it's like 30 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour, or kilometers, depending on what part of the world you are. It says, not going beyond measure, but within the limits of the sphere which God has appointed us. Listen to this. Many leaders overextend themselves, and I will show you, you know, why. Because, you, you, you know, we, we, our eyes are open to the various things, especially in the age of social media, yeah, and the age of hype, yeah. But this is what the Bible says. Paul says he will not go beyond the limits, which means God sets speed limits for us. God also sets capacity limits for us that have been appointed to us. It's fair, which especially includes you, verse 14. For we are not overextending ourselves. So what Paul is saying is that it is possible for a leader to have, uh, overextend himself. That you saw somebody else have 10 churches, uh, and then, oh, uh, you, you have uh, two or three, and you say, ah, look, let's, let's, let's do this, let's do this, let's begin to plant more, let's do this. That, like, you know, what he's saying is that you will kill yourself. You know, don't carry, my advice to you is don't carry what you were never built for. Yeah. yeah. Do not carry, that person who is carrying what they are carrying, yeah, they have the grace for it. So the yoke is easy, the burden is light. But for you, it will be oppressive. All right. Then number six point is to prioritize. Prioritize, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, burdens. And when I say prioritize, uh, uh, this is a very key point here. Why? Because, you know, I learned this <laughs> over the years that, you know, when I was younger, I wanted to do everything, you know. And so... The yeah, it's everything I wanted to just ah, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. Now, these are legitimate things God put in my heart to do. It's like Noah's ark. Yeah. And say he wanted to build the ark within three days. Noah, you will kill yourself. <laughs> because God does it. You know, 
The Bible says sufficient for the day is the evil thereof, which means every day has its own burden. And, and it says it this way in Psalm 68 verse 19. Praise be to the Lord, to, uh, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens, which means every day has a daily burden. Okay, so one of the things that kill, kills people or, or, or brings them to a place of overextension and, and overwork and, and stress and burnout is they, one, they carry yesterday's burden into today. You know, things that didn't work yesterday, they bring it to the, then some, they also carry tomorrow's burden, overburden and bring, and they are, that's what you call worry and anxiety of what has not happened yet. Okay. But the other, the, the way to handle this thing is, listen to this, in one year, I look at one year and I say to myself, you know, do I have to do everything within the first quarter? Does it have to be, you know, or do I, these things I'm chasing, do I have to do it all at this time? Now, listen to this, they, you know, they say a goal is a dream with a deadline. Yeah. But you know what? I say to you that many of us, one of the things that is killing a lot of leaders is that we, we put you know, unreasonable burdens on ourselves. So right now, let me give a, a practical, simple example. And in our church, we're about concluding a 60-day New Testament, which means essentially, on average, we read four chapters of the of the uh, New Testament every day for the, uh, for 60 days. And you know what? It's actually, it's, it's more challenging than we know because it's easier to study the Bible than to just read it fast. Okay, now the point is this, you know, we're coming to the end of it, but one of the ways I'm going to encourage the people at the end of it is it's, that's an artificial burden. So I'm going to tell them, don't feel discouraged. Why? Because we put that burden. Who says you have to read it in 60 days? We we are the ones that we are the ones that chose to 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 read it in 60 days. Who says you have to read it in 60 days? You can decide to read it in in in, in 120 days or uh, and so forth. You know what? A lot of pastors, a lot of leaders. So we want to be the biggest church in whatever by so so and so. Did God give you that burden? First of all, in terms of the biggest church, did God give it that that to you? And so we we take everybody and we're trying to achieve that thing. And listen to this: people have fallen, you know, into sin, into ill health, and you know, and I we pray that that will not be the case for us. Amen. Then the next way to to uh, you know to overcome burden is to shift. You know, I don't have the time to talk about this, but to know when to to change, you know, um, I, I always say pain, yeah, is a sign that something needs to change. And so when you are stressed, when you are when when the when the organization is beginning to, you know, things are beginning, then you know, it's either you are overextending yourself, you are going beyond, you know, your limit, the limits God has given you, or well, God is trying to give you more, but you need to change, you know, the way you do things, as it were. I call I call it shifting gears. When you're in gear one, gear one of a car, you know, after a while, it begins to make noise, and it's trying to tell you move to the next gear. You know, I believe it was Peter Drucker that said that organizations, when they double in size, yeah, they increase in complexity, and that their structure becomes obsolete. Okay. And so the same way, listen to this, for sake of time, you know, one of the ways to deal with, if not, what will happen is that, the, you know, the, there'll be various complaints, the various things. If you don't, if you don't grow and shift that, okay, let's change the way our structures, our systems and reorganize, blah, blah, blah. Then what will happen is that the thing will overburden you. Um, then uh, point number eight is support systems, support systems. And uh, Moses had to bring about a shift in his in his organization. That was what Jethro counseled him to uh, to do. But when I say support systems, it's important to have both what I call Jethros, that's people mentors who you you sit down with or you know dial in with for cancer. Oh, how do I do this? These are people who are experienced. You know, Jethro was a father-in-law, but he was like a businessman speaking to a pastor. Then it's also important to have Joshuas. Joshuas are the people who you delegate to, but it's also important to have Aaron and Hort. These are people who, who, who support you. They replenish, they pour into you, as it were, when you, when, you are, when you are drained. And then it's important to have boundaries. If you, if you are not, if you, you're going to overcome the burden of leadership, you need to have boundaries. And when I say boundaries, when I was a younger uh, uh, pastor, I used to 
cancel anybody, everybody, and every time and any time. <laughs> ah, if I continue that way, I would I won't be alive today. You know, so I learned very quickly. And somebody just told me, said, okay, this is an older pastor. Why, why are you canceling every day at any time? People will call me in the middle, ah, pastor, they are about to arrest me and stuff like that. Ah, pastor, I'm about to lose my home, you know. Uh, and the gentleman said, why don't you have a day for canceling? One particular day. If it's Tuesday evening, and so, so, and so, time, and you book it, blah, blah. But apart from that, yeah, I then realized that also canceling was flowing into my family life. They would call at odd hours when I'm about to spend time with, with my uh, my wife or with my children. And they say, Pastor, why are you going on holiday when I'm going through so, so, and so? So we set boundaries. You know, I will put that some things will not change. It doesn't matter if, if if you are losing your mind or whatever. Of course, nothing that diff, bad. But at least I will not be the one to respond to it. Why? Because on this day, I'm with my wife. And, uh, you know, I, I will not pick up a, a ministry call past a certain time of the night. Why? Because I need to rest. I need to be with my family. I also have a holiday. You can't call me on holiday. Why? Be you have to create those boundaries. If not, People will push those boundaries and you'll be overburdened and stressed. And then the last is sleep and rest. Very important. Look, I don't have time to talk about this, but listen to me. Sleep is not a luxury. <laughs> Seven, eight hours of sleep. When I was younger, I was sleeping four hours, five hours, six hours, and I was feeling good about it. Listen to this. I mean, I end with this story. I remember going to a particular leadership conference and I saw this gentleman. This was in the US and a young gentleman I hadn't seen in a long time. I said, what's happening? He said, oh, I'm with this church now, this particular church. And, you know, the pastor is, uh, 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 you know, planning on sending me out, in, um, 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 you know, to start a church, blah, blah, blah. So I was excited for him. Oh, young guy. I remember, you know, when you just gave your life. And then two, three months later, yeah, I saw him somewhere. This was just before COVID at another event in the United Kingdom. So I said, so how's the new church going? What? He said, oh, pastor, it didn't happen. I said, why? He said, oh, uh, the plans have changed and they had to re rearrange. I said, why? He said, my pastor died. I said, what do you mean your pastor died? I said, two months ago, his pastor is Caucasian. This gentleman is, is the black Nigerian. He says, yes, so what? They had to rearrange. So, you know, they were about to start a church. I said, how did he die? He said, well, you know, they were um, they had three services they were running uh, three services doing so so and so and that you know the man just preached the three services and you know went home stayed you know um and um uh ate, had his dinner and then was supposed to go for his daughter's birthday in the evening his daughter was you know in her 20s or 30s the man was in his late 50s and that they went to wake him up to go for his daughter's uh, whatever he had had a heart attack at night listen to this that spoke volumes to me yeah because other people would have been seen looking at pastors and say oh he runs three services he does this he does that he does that and they would have been envying him but you know what um that man was carrying illegitimate burdens or let's put it this way there were other your body will give you signs to tell you that this thing that you are carrying is not yours <laughs> that you have gone beyond the limits you know and so um for sake of time we'll just stop there i hope this helped you and i look forward to the q a session in the next few, few minutes thank you pastor Tola, and god bless you and i pray that you will not be overburdened by your leadership but you'll be empowered to move into greater heights thank you thank you so much uh dr Shalafalalade. uh that was quite impactful we really, really, really appreciate you. And I think um, where we are now is that it's time for questions and answers. Uh, we have some questions here. Uh, if we can bring on Pastor Balaji as well, so that uh, we'll be able to take uh, the questions and the, uh, with both of you. Uh, if you can bring on Pastor Balaji, let's bring him on, please. Once again, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, while we are waiting for him, we are going to go ahead. Um, one of the questions that we have here is that, can you share with us uh, a pivotal moment in your leadership journey where you felt overwhelmed by a burden? And uh, how did you overcome the obstacle? 
<laughs> well, it, it depends on which version you want to hear, Pastor Tola. <laughs> <laughs> there, 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 there are so many, but um, uh, I was, uh, yes, yes, I will, I will share the one that is politically correct. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know the other one I'm talking about. Well, but um, the, 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 the one I want to focus on is um. Hmm. When we started our church, this was then the, the not this one uh, when I was in the denomination and the church was growing and then it then stagnated and for I don't know how long it was this was two years in and it just didn't grow anymore and I did everything possible and it was just frustrating and long story short you know um, uh, I I went and saw somebody who has become a mentor today. And he just gave me one, he said, look, have you ever heard of church growth barriers? <laughs> Long story short, gave me that cancel. And he just told me, look, this, I've, he said, people have written about it. And when I just applied that, by the grace of God, that body, that body was resolved. The other one would be the health issue. You know, um, you know, uh, but we'll leave that for maybe some other, another question or so. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Um, while we are waiting for Pastor Balaji, I understand is not, uh, you know, on yet. We'll, we'll continue to take you. Um, so the 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 second one is that how do you reconcile being decisive and vulnerable as a leader, um, and how has this helped you to navigate the burden of leadership? You know, being decisive and vulnerable as a leader. Okay, being decisive and vulnerable. I mean, I don't know. Do you want to give explain, give a bit more body yeah, to it? How, or how an example? You to it? If if you have to do something, uh, make a decision, and that decision yes. will make you vulnerable. But at the same time, you have to make that decision make because that de it's okay, good for I the organization. How do you manage both? Okay, excellent, excellent. Well every good leader will have to come to that juncture in their life where they will make we have to make emotional or you know supposedly emotional or sentimental decisions versus uh, uh, decisions that are reasonable and logical and you know so balancing sentiment with uh, uh, with with what is reasonable to do okay and <laughs> Uh, it's a very difficult one, you, but it is it is something any any mature leader will have to, you know, you have to go with what is 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 reasonable, do the decisive thing to save the organization, and then in terms of sentiment and vulnerability, that's a totally different thing entirely. Then we will deal with that later. But uh, the preservation of the organization or the or the institution is more important. If I if I understood the question well. I hope that answers it. I don't Both know your decisive decision and being vulnerable, you know, how, how do you navigate it? Um, let me let me ask you one or two more questions before we let you go, because I know that you are you are a very busy person, you know. Um, what role does self assessment play in managing and identifying the burden of leadership? And do you have any? you know, techniques or whatever you, you want to recommend to us. Uh, I say that again, what I, role does self-assessment play in managing and identifying the body of leadership? Uh, ex excellent, excellent question. And I will give a, a, a try and keep give it a short answer. Um, self-assessment is very important. First of all, like I said earlier, first of all, assess whether you are even built for this thing that you are trying to do uh, that you are you want to they say you have a calling you said you had something uh, okay this do you do, is, is do you do you have do you have the do you have what it takes to be this person do, do you even really know 
before you what you do an audit on yourself then you do an audit of on this this calling that you are talking about do you know what it takes you know um look at the people who are who are doing what it is that i'm gonna sit down with them and ask about the back end what it is that you know what it takes that when i speak about counting the cost count the cost to your you know uh to your the health demands on you the time demands on you then bring your spouse in whether she is calling or this new whatever that you are trying direction that you are going to it, it, does your family have the capacity for it right now or is it something that okay god is saying we should do it but is it now that you're supposed to be doing it then another way to do self-assessment is to do um a feedback with your with your leaders or team and let them let them let them <laughs> appraise you and let them you know tell and and let them be honest let it be honest feedback you know because sometimes we have an overinflated estimation of ourselves and what it is we can do or what it is we are ready for you know and then they, they may even tell you the truth pastor you know not right now you know this thing is going to overburden the organization or will overburden you as a person you know and of course let you let your spouse assess you in terms of you know have honest conversations in that regard and then you know a few other things but i will we'll keep it at that for now okay 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 the, the the only thing that i just want to ask again is that when you have that kind of feedback from your the leaders around you or your spouse how do you yes. balance it for you to come to the right decision <laughs> Okay, so hmm. because I'm sorry, do you, because in, yes, in, 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 in another way, in another way, uh, people can advise you about the timing of something just because yes. of their own perspective. They look at I, it from I, their own perspective. I agree. You know, and they say, ah, I, I, I know that this thing will get to me eventually, and I don't want to add any extra, you know, thing I, to I, me, I, and da 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 da. And it might be from that that they are talking, not from the perspective of the vision or the not being as it were of the. So how do you balance, you know, this? I, I, I agree with you. So, so I, I will speak. I will speak primarily in the context of. I mean, I'm a pastor, so I would speak about, you know, hearing from God. So, for example, if when when I hear from, uh, let me give a, a, a bit of a sensitive example. So when I heard from God to leave a denomination, I heard, I told my wife, I came back. Her first reaction, no, <laughs> ah, what about this? What about, I said, what about this? What about that? I, I mean, I don't, I don't believe my wife with hearing from God. I said, well, God is not an author of confusion. You know, God, if you've spoken to me, well, I leave it. It took two years before she came back to me and said she had heard. And then now, she came back about a month later and said, I've heard, oh, let's be good. I said, no, 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 no. You can't now, be, you can't now rush me. <laughs> you know, now we, I've heard about, you know, what we should be doing. I need to hear about how and when, you know. So what, what I'm saying essentially is that, you know, um, it, I, I, I brought her in as a stakeholder. And if you notice, I said her response was, no, what about this? What about this? What about that? I, and I thought to myself, well, <laughs> I have heard God and we're going ahead with this thing in my mind, but maybe the timing, yeah, uh, is what we, I need to consider. So I think one has to be, uh, God is the ultimate one we have to please. And there's something I forgot to mention uh, in the message, and I, I, I think it's important to mention it here. One of the things that guides all my decision making is that I perform for an audience of one. At the end of the day, the Bible says it is appointed for a man to die once and after the job, God will settle accounts with us. And it is only, he will, he's going to settle accounts with you on the things that you did and the things you did not do. That is usually my guiding principle. So when I'm navigating, whether it pleases this person or not, that's always my guiding principle. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you, uh, Pastor. Um, Pastor Bolaji, do you are welcome again? You are welcome again. Um, I'm telling Thank you, you very I'm much, enjoying, Pastor. I'm, I'm enjoying both of you 
being here because I know it's not something that happens every day. So please just <laughs> forgive me. Let us enjoy this company today. You know, I won't take too much of your time, but I want to hear from both of you so that we can take inspiration home. Uh, now, uh, Pascalaji, yes. can you share a few personal experiences of burdens of leadership and how you've navigated your way through? You know, one or two experiences of burden of leadership and how you've been able to navigate yourself through it. Part of leadership is training people, pulling people in, but also releasing people. You know, I remember a time in my leadership, I had to, you know, some people just had to leave. And, and you know, and it was just a very difficult thing for me because it was just a very difficult thing for me. It was quite painful. And, um, you know, I, I just really struggled in that area. But ultimately, when they eventually left, it, 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 was a, it was a season, I just entered into a huge season of growth and explosion. You know, you know, so, so that, that, that's one of the things. And another season was, you know, God was calling me to do things I've never done before. Things I've never seen anyone done before. And well, I'd never seen anyone in my own scale of reference, in my own scale of reference someone very close to me and it was just very difficult but it, it was a lot of me trusting god in those seasons you know it was a lot of me trusting god in those seasons you know um it was a lot of me trusting god in those seasons and th that's one for me let me give a very practical list, and this will help a lot this will help a lot i remember we're going to our church was just maybe about four years old we had outgrown the space where we were in. I will tell you a place where I miss God and a place where I got it right. And um, I, I felt in my heart, we're just in this small place that could sit, I think we're just about a thousand people around that time. And, um, you know, and God, I got the notion to move to a venue that was a prime venue in the whole of our own city. But the cost was phenomenal. And one of the places where I felt I miss God because I was afraid. Eventually, I got an opportunity, and this is one of the burden. It's it, it's um it, it's that capacity to grow. I I did just I was not just able to grow myself to that point that I could carry more. So I I felt myself pulling. I I felt my I was so scared. God was taking me further, pulling me further, but I was really really afraid. And you know I was talking about I I didn't mention the different kind of capacity, but one of the capacity leaders. Grow, your risk capacity is your risk capacity eventually i got an opportunity and we had to buy a property you know and it was expensive you know it was really expensive we went for it and did it so one of the things one of the areas i'd had to develop capacity was to develop my risk capacity that pertains to me a lot thank you sir okay okay um i'll i'll ask this question and uh, it's for both of you. Um, how do you do what you do? Now, let's look at it this way. For Pastor Shola, when I'm talking to him, I'm saying, okay, I'll see you in church at our six locations, and we laugh about it and all that stuff and all that. Now, now and you, are still, you still have time to do this and also minister for some other organizations. The same thing with Pastor Balaji. You do next level prayer early in the morning. Honestly, when the Bible says that old men will dream dreams, I'm telling you, me, I can't do that prayer thing. Honestly, I'm telling you, that dream for old men is, is, is in the place of sleeping. You know? I'm, I'm telling you, I can't do that thing. But I've left that one for you because God has called you to do the thing. No problem. Now, now, I don't know how you do that. And then you are doing next level all over the nations then you are also expanding with the churches. Uh, I, I want Dr. Shalafalaye to answer this first, and then Pastor Balaji, you, how do you do this? How do you get in touch or place close tabs on what is around, you know, just to make sure the vision is not diluted? Because growth usually dilutes vision. So how do you do the growth? I mean, the vision is not diluted. Uh, uh, Dr. Shalafalaye,
there was something you said at the last party. There was a bit of interference with the internet. I'm saying that how do you do all these things so that the, yes. the vision is not diluted? Because I also okay. understand that growth, yes, you know, begins to dilute, you know, vision. Yes. Do you understand? How do yes. you do this thing so that the, the oil on the edge is still has the same potency as the one on the sketch? Excellent. Well, the, 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 I guess the way I would answer it is, uh, first of all, simply that. This is my own question. <laughs> Nobody is asking that question. I'm the one asking yeah, that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. <laughs> I, 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 I know. The, 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 first, the first thing is, to be honest with you, it's not like as though even I started out wanting to do four locations or five locations or six locations. When, when I first stepped out, yeah, I actually just wanted one. It was... It, when you talk about necessity is the mother of invention, it was as things went along that, um, you know, it, it, it just started to spring up. They started to spring up. And uh, uh, we literally had to, as it were, um, uh, um, I don't know if you know the United Kingdom. Uh, I'm sure, of course, you do. There is no space. There's hardly any space. So the church was growing bigger. So we had to find a way, a, a, a smart way of, keep the keeping the growth and then you know so that was what happened and so we were forced into it um and you know we had to embrace technology we had to embrace very but the to answer your question how do we ensure that there is replication without dilution or pollution very strong point i, I, I you know i don't we don't have the, the time to go through everything but training is one key very major whereby you you you, you get your people to as it were you know, catch the vision, clarity of vision, simplifying the vision, and you know, such that it is replicable, and then having systems uh, in, in in place, and then over time, what has happened? Well, you know, you said something. How am I able also to go here, do this, and do other things? It's just essentially increasingly reducing my own responsibilities and sharing the load, so that I focus on what is essential, you know, um, and what it is God will hold me responsible for, you know, and empowering others. I'm sure Pastor Bolachi would add to that. Okay, okay. And thank you, Pastor Bolachi. Thank you, sir. Um, so I think the first thing is to understand seasons. You know, people talk about balance, but I always talk about seasons. So I think that the season is here, and you know, I see that the season of life is here and there. So I understand that I'm in a certain season. I may not be in that season again tomorrow. So whatever season I'm in, I want to take advantage of that season. The second thing is to prioritize. One of the things great leaders do is that they learn to prioritize. So you're going to ask yourself, what can I do? And I'm the only one that can do it. And others may not be able to do. So the key thing is to prioritize. The third thing would be to raise men. Like Pastor Sholad said, to raise and train men. The fact that you're a four man does not mean you can do the work of four men. A four man, F O R E, does not mean you can do the work of four men. So, one of the things we'll see here, one of the things we'll see here is to train, is to train, is to train. One of the things we'll see here is to train. And the last one will be systems. The last one will be systems. I think that one of the things that helped me do, I would like two more things. Number one, if your why is very clear, it will keep you motivated and inspired. It will keep you, if your why is very clear, even though you are growing, it will keep you focused, it will keep you motivated, it will keep you inspired. You know, if your why is very clear. But the other thing also is, um, the other thing also is what Pastor said, the place of systems. You know, you the systems provide a capacity for which things can go on so that you are not exerting a lot of effort. So a lot of things I will have done manually before, gone over and over again. We'll just kind of develop a system and also raising men. You know, um, I, I mean, right now, our staff is over 200. We have a staff strength of over 200. But that was not there before. But it's not as if nobody can, you know, some people, you, it's, it's not what you used to brag because it costs. So it's a, it costs a lot to have a lot of staff. You know, but the reason why you will need that is because you just need more people. You know, so as the operation, if you don't want to kill yourself, you have to 
problem with Australia has said now, now they have me as I'm sure that their staff costs also will have exploded. You know, that, that kind not, of thing. Not, not, as, not as much as, as, as 200. <laughs> so I'm wondering how you sleep at night. <laughs> I'll pray for you. <laughs> I need the prayers. I need the prayers. I need the prayers. <laughs> I, maybe I need next level prayers to get to that place. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 My, my own wish and prayer is that when I grow up, I will be like both of you. you know, so, so I'll be like both of you. <laughs> you know, so, so it's okay. It's like okay. The budget. Once you send me your budget, if I have your budget, I'll stop praying. Ah. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Once again, honestly, you guys, you have been a blessing to us. I'm telling you, you have no idea how much you've blessed us by creating time, you know, to be part of GLC uh, 23. Um, we look at how things go. Uh, we never know. Uh, maybe next year we might go back to real life rather than, you know, virtual. You know, but we'll see how it goes. But definitely, definitely, we'd we'll love to have you back again. Once again, uh, thank you so much. Please uh, say hello to your dear wives and uh, that we appreciate them. And also your grown adults and uh, <laughs> growing <laughs> young adults. So thank you once again and God bless.